Hello everybody, I just wanted to give you a really quick heads up before the start of this video. I've been having some really bad uh, sync issues on all of my videos recently across all games, so there's something wrong with my recording software. I have the same settings on it I've always used, but for some reason, for whatever reason, there's some drifting sync issues. So, uh, and it's, it's frustrating because Episodes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 were recorded all at the same time, and episodes 1, 2, 3, 6, and 7 were perfectly fine, and episodes 4 and 5 have this drifting sync issue. So apologies that there's going to be a little, a little wiggle on the audio and the visual there, but I'm doing my best to try to solve the issue, and hopefully it's not too objectionable. Hello everybody and welcome back to Xenonauts Community Patch Edition and we left off last episode having just landed with a the nice crew here. All these people have a little bit of experience now which is nice. We're starting to get the feel for some of these people and their and their specific um like their specific talents as it were. Specific talents, that's a good way of putting it. So, what I'm going to do first is start scouting. I think this is, well, yeah, this is the edge of the map here and back here. So, chances are there's gonna, not going to be anybody over there. Well, you know what? There could be. That's just a person. That's just a person. Stop freaking out, Magnus. Yeah, there's way more over on this side than I thought there was. I think this might be the corner right here. So, there probably is more on this side than I was anticipating. Let's get out this way. Let's pop up here. Scrooch down. And get some backup. That's the sniper. Shotgunner. It's just a regular rifleman. Should send someone out this way just to just to make sure. Good. What I got over here? That's my medic. Gonna hang out there. Machine gunner. Crouch, and this is just a rifleman. Send him up here. I anticipate some alien contact on this. Whoa, boy, was I right. Uh, lucky I didn't take a hit on that. Pivot! Fire everything! Fire everything better! Whoo! There we go. Okay. Yeah, that's the edge of the map there. So he was just he was down here. We got another one up here. Whoo! That was fucking scary. Can we get up to this this log here? Yeah. Perfect. All right. You're gonna cover the the flank. Please and thank you. This area is a little scary. I don't have a, I don't have a lot of people over here. There could be they could be anywhere. They could be anywhere. All right, you fired. Scrooch up just a hint here. I have this guy go. Oh no! No stop! 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 You got suppressed, so yeah. Okay, we're just end the turn. There he is. Always oh, coming close. All right. Oh, good. Okay, he used all of his... He used all of his time units on movement. Oh, okay. Colonists, you're gonna need to get out of the way. And then, that way we could do this. <laughs> Without shooting colonists. Which would be unfortunate. Okay, we know there's an alien in here somewhere. I don't, that was the one that was back here, I think, and I thought there was some more movement. All right, you're gonna go right up here, right up to that fence. I gotta remember that the, um, the shield guys have to go around obstacles. They can't hurdle them. So it's just something to watch out for. We don't have enough to move. All right, I think we're okay over here. Um, all right, let's get the shotgunner up over here. Wait, where is that? Oh, there he is. Here, pop over here. Get down! You move up. Scrooch. Okay, good. That, that's good. 
I've got people over here still waiting to go. This is the edge, so I can kind of not have, I don't have to worry about over here too much, but we'll keep them scrooching around a little. I'm going to have, here, you move up here. I'm going to have these two guys work together. Get down. Oh, we got two over here. Mm. Nice pistol shot. That was a very good pistol shot. Okay, maybe we could take him out with the pistol. Excellent, excellent. Okay, good. Machine gunner, move up. What well, is something I have to worry about that I I should I should keep an eye out for, which is something I I generally forgot to do a lot of times in previous playthroughs, is make sure that reaction fire lines are clear too before opening fire. Or before, like, settling down for a turn, that is. Because there's been lots of times where people have taken reaction shots and, and, and team killed. Oh, oh, here we go. That's the enemy ship right there. Here, let's scooch over this way. Okay, good. We know where it is. He's popping up over this way. He's probably falling back towards it. Medic, you could just kind of stay there. I can roll. I want to just move up a little bit. And what I'm going to do is have these guys come up and sweep towards the known craft. All right, edge of the map, so we can start pivoting this way. Okay, I think we got it covered pretty well now. There they are. Did he run? I think maybe he ran inside. I think maybe that's what happened. All right, so I need to get, I need to get Benjamin like down this way. Is if I could blast this uh, the door off, then I don't have to worry too much about uh, firing inside. I can blast the door off with the machine gunner, then snipe down it. I don't have to really worry about getting inside and breaching it. Cause that could be that could be hideous. Well, I mean, we're not gonna have to worry. It's not a big issue with a craft this small, but when with larger craft, uh, just getting through the door could be a, a nightmare. Probably the other side. Better better shot from there. Trees in the way. Got a couple hits in there. We have a lot of ammo, so we just or or what I could the other thing would be to um move up with with ooh, ooh, wait, do we see somebody? Is he back here? Oh. Well, that's interesting. Maybe he's stuck back there. Here. Just hang out there. He might be stuck. Cause I don't think I can know. The ship's in the way. Oh no, he can. What's going on over there? Something wonky. There's some wonkiness in there. See, let's get this guy out too. Let's just kind of hold off for a second. <laughs> Good job, guys. Oh, wow. Nice hit. So that one took a hit, so we should try to... Yeah! Try to double down the hits on him. Missed. Pistol guy. We'll have to wait. Now we'll just wait. Let the sniper and the machine gunner take it. Oh, hello! Okay, okay. Okay. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Alright, sorry, sorry, Magnus. You're deaf now. You're definitely deaf now. Holy crap. That guy scared the hell out of me. So. Theoretically, we should still have one inside there. Is that some, is that some goop? 
Some alien goop. I mean, there's... Yeah, there's only the one way in, it looks like. Suppressed. Sniper? <sighs> okay, well, we'll try that again. I can't see him now. I, I might just walk up here and chuck a grenade in. Over this way. I'm just trying. I'm trying. I I don't want to do something stupid and get myself hurt for no reason. Here, let's move up. No, that's not. I thought that may be alien goop. That's just a destroyed tree. Where is he? Where is the- he must be back here somewhere, right? He's in there. And that person's now in a very bad position. Can't- can't crouch down or anything. How far can I get with a normal shot? Not, no, not far anymore. Oh! Good, good thing that, that thing worked. Okay, we're gonna run right over here. Uh, right there. Whoa, it, it, oh, oh, yeah. Okay, there we go. Just say, just unload that pistol into him and we'll be okay. Ooh, some real nice upgrades in here. Benjamin, Lady Magnus, uh, Myrodin, Colonus, and Harper all got a promotion. Nice. That was pretty good. Starting to do a little better at this. Starting to get into the into the swing of things. Ooh, we got an alien pistol. The plasma pistol is an alien sidearm that is approximately eight inches long and roughly a kilogram in weight. Though it bears some resemblance to a human firearm, it does not fire a bullet, but rather a searing bolt of superheated plasma. It is a powerful weapon, easily capable of killing an unarmed man in a single shot. Yeah, I know that. However, our test suggests the compact size of the weapon renders it fairly inefficient. The plasma bolt loses cohesion and starts to dissipate almost immediately. It is thus most dangerous at short range, where a single shot has a good chance of killing one of your soldiers outright. As that range increases, the projectile steadily becomes less accurate and damaging. The lesson here should be clear. Fight units equipped with this weapon from as far as possible. Though it would make a fine addition to our arsenal, the weapon has clearly been designed for alien troops. Anatomical differences between our species make it difficult for a human to wield efficiently, so any soldier attempting to use the weapon on the battlefield will suffer severe accuracy penalties when doing so. Sadly... We are also nowhere near understanding or replicating the technology contained within the weapon. Recovering more advanced alien weapons uh, may help in that regard. All is not lost, however. Running more tests on this weapon should allow us to develop battlefield infantry armor better suited to protecting our men from extraterrestrial energy weapons. Awesome. Alien plasma rifle improved combat armor. Yay. All right. So we're working on alien biology, alien alloys, improved combat armor. Commence project. Great. That is one of my favorite first things, early things to get. Yeah, this is why I didn't want to make another base, because I knew I'd be running into financial trouble if I if I tried that that early in the game. Alright, so this other Foxtrot's being built. Base is looking nice. We almost have our medical facility up, which should help out a lot. Hospital beds used, two of zero! Actually, having a proper med bay would be a good thing. But we've got our first uh, Fortress Magnus up. Production of Foxtrot has finished. Alright, do we have anything else to build? I don't think so. We've got the two Foxtrots. I don't want to spend any more money at the moment. Five engineers. 
Yeah, as much as I would like more, maybe mm, maybe one more. Do three and three. Do you think that'd be a good idea? How much is another uh, hanger? It's not that much. I guess we'll do that. Alien biology. Ooh, that's another, um, that's another research we finished. Tissue analysis on the remains of different extraterrestrial species has allowed us to compare them with one another and attempt to find characteristics common to them all. Though we have no definite answer, there are hints as the origin of the aliens. There are strong similarities in the physiology of all biological alien units encountered so far. For example, all are humanoid. All also possess both a circulatory system and a central nervous system, albeit with some variation in function. This allows for the possibility of a common planetary origin. The huge variety of life on our own planet clearly illustrates that an array of vastly different creatures can evolve simultaneously on a single planet. This was our initial assumption largely due to the shared habitat inside the alien UFOs, an atmosphere containing perhaps 5-6% to 6 oxygen rather than the 21% of ours. The aliens respire via oxygen in much the same manner as humans do, using a common vector to distribute it around the body, a semi-synthetic protein that mimics the role of human hemoglobins, but much more efficiently and giving alien blood a distinctive purple hint. However, the fundamental organic chemistry is so dramatically different between alien species that a common origin cannot be possible. The reason these species share a common habitat is not evolution, but rather extensive genetic engineering. This oxygen-carrying protein bears no resemblance to any other part of any of the corpses studied. In other words, it appears an external force has engineered these creatures to be capable of breathing the same air that they do. The identity of the external force and the reasoning behind this decision remains obscure, at least for now. In the meantime, we are turning the research to practical use. My team has constructed holding tanks and laboratories, which can be used to confine captured enemy units in a low oxygen environment. If exposed to our atmospheres for long enough, alien units will eventually succumb to oxygen toxicity, allowing us to study them more closely. That is great, because now... I'm going to pop the, those guys back onto improved combat armor. Also, those stun weapons are great. I love equipping someone with a stun weapon and just whipping the shit out of an alien. Oh, I love doing that. I think next month we're going to have to try to build another base in the Americas. Ideally. Cuba, maybe? Somewhere centrally located that could cover most of South and North America? Ooh, medical facility has been completed. Excellent. Okay, so we go to our base now. Two of eight. Okay. So if we ha like hop over to our guys, they should heal quicker now. Good. Something I always had an issue with before is I I forgot to build that building often, so no one ever I never had a med bay. I have another very small one. Intercept. Let's use uh, two condors. Bam! Oh, it's an alien fighter. Okay, well that's different. Should we just auto resolve it and see what happens? Yeah, it didn't even hit us. Following items have been recovered, a fighter data core and an alien alloy. So we have we have alien fighters out now. Condors can take them down, though. That's good. Uh, researching explosives is usually a good idea, too, because the explosives can upgrade the, like, torpedoes and stuff on your... I'm going to send the Foxtrots after this guy because they're faster and he's pretty far away. See if they can get there before he leaves. Oh, yeah! Already! That's brilliant. Jackal combat armor. The Jackal Combat Armor offers our soldiers extra battlefield protection at the cost of increased weight. It is not the ideal equipment for every situation, but in many cases, the extra survivability could be the difference between life and death. Laboratory tests on captured alien plasma weapons have confirmed the traditional body armor is essentially worthless against energy projectiles, having been designed to resist ballistic impact rather than heat damage. However, testing a modified combat vest with heat-resistant rather than impact-resistant ceramic plates showed impressive results. The ceramics were able to dissipate enough of the heat to give the wearer a reasonable chance of survival, though they are still likely to suffer injuries in the process. While it provides an extra boost in survivability, the armor is heavy and will limit the other equipment such as ammunition or secondary weapons a soldier can carry into battle. Armor will degrade rapidly under fire and will not withstand repeated hits. 
nor provide the wearer guaranteed protection, uh, e.g. it hardly matters what armor a soldier is wearing if he is shot in the face. Nevertheless, it is still better than nothing. It can be constructed in the workshop. Yup! Okay, so alien alloys, hunter scout car. Because I would like to get that up. Because I love the hunter scout car. Workshop stream. Okay, so armor, jackal armor, commence project. Uh, 20,000 a piece. Ideally, I would like at least eight, but I'm going to tell them to work on 10. And everybody's working on it. Cost of $200,000. Auto resolve. Uh, yeah, we're fine. They barely got scratched. Return to base. Yeah, they, I mean, that wasn't the ideal situation for Foxtrots. But be, just because of the range, getting them out there quick was more was more necessary than getting them... Um, uh, than, than the survivability, because I figured they'd be okay. Intercept mission. What do you want to hear first, the good news or the bad? The good news is we're having a serious impact on the extraterrestrial air operations. Incidents are down over the sponsors we're covering, and r and happy with the technology we're covering. The bad news is extraterrestrial high command has escalated operations by introducing dedicated fighter craft. The ETs have set up combat air patrols to directly counter both our interceptors and national forces. UFOs tasked on intercept missions will patrol the skies, striking at civilian and military aircraft. Data from previous intercepts suggest that ET fighters on CAP missions will make Xenonaut aircraft a priority. If ET interceptors spot our craft most likely informed by ET satellites, they will head directly towards them and force a fight. Interceptors are the most likely type of UFO on CAP, so look for very smart, small signals. Dropships will be especially easy targets, so I would recommend clearing out squadrons with intercept missions first before uh, tackling other craft to prevent accidents happening on the ground team, uh, to the ground team. I've had that happen before, where my ground teams got intercepted and shot down, and it sucked, because I think six of the eight people on board died in the crash. Okay, the fighter is a very small UFO apparently designed for ear superiority. It is fast and tougher than the Light Scout, and surprisingly well-armed for its size. Though not individually a match for an F-17 Condor, I doubt a lone F-17 could stand much chance against a full squadron of three. The most interesting feature of this design is the absence of pressurized crew compartment. Virtually the entire saucer consists of a propulsion system, sensors, and weapons array. This initially leads us to believe the craft was unmanned, but analysis of the wreckage revealed enough biological matter to convince us otherwise. We are unsure exactly what form the pilot takes. The, there is only room for one, but the lack of transparent canopy or control system implies they are much more heavily integrated with the craft than, a human, than human pilots are. The fighter's primary armament, armament is a short-range, rapid-fire energy weapon, much like the craft cannon on our F-17s. However, it also carries a pair of longer-range homing plasma projectiles that act more like missiles. Quite what these devices are and how they work is unknown, as fighters tend to explode so spectacularly that when destroyed, there's little left to study. Whatever the culprit, I doubt we'll be recovering an intact version anytime soon. That's okay. We'll blow them out of the sky nonetheless. Hangar's been finished. I think I'm going to save up any, any more money. I just want that hangar available to me. I'm not going to... Um, crew it right now with a with a fox truck because that's like a hundred and twenty thousand dollars or something. Got lots of shit going down over here. Oh, that that hurts. That hurts to watch all that. Let's see. Center on UFO. What do we got over here? It's coming at. It's small. And it's coming at us. So let's send out, out two condors to to grab it. Oh, I don't know if they're gonna get there. Nope. I was about to say. If he's not coming, like, directly into our our area, then we're probably not going to catch him. We'll try again. Got it. Okay. Combat fuel zero. Disengage. Damn it. We, 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 we didn't get there in time. All right. Send out the faster guys. See if they can catch him. That's unfortunate. I was like, ah, we got him. Wait, never mind. He's down. All right, should we just uh, blow this? I think we should just blow it. But yeah, let's just blow it up. Let's get our guys home. 
See, it's towards it's towards the end of the month, so I wanna I wanna process this month. Try to get as much money as possible and uh see if we can set up another base. Alien alloys! Alien technology is founded on a variety of exotic materials, every one of which possesses remarkable properties. We have identified materials with tensile strength and heat resistances in orders of magnitude greater than anything previously known, as well as those with more exotic properties, such as room temperature superconductivity. Almost all of them are ultra-advanced ceramics with a chemical structure as alien as the extraterrestrials themselves. Though we have yet to encounter any unknown fundamental element in these materials, we have little idea how they generate these extraordinary powers or how they could be manufactured. It is the difference between coal and diamond, fundamentally the same stuff, but radically different in practice. Given their exceptional heat resistance, the most obvious military application for these alloys would be in a personal battlefield armor. Unfortunately, they are so effective at dissipating heat that nothing in our laboratory can generate enough to melt them, making fabrication of plate, ar a plate armor or anything else little more than a pipe dream. Though still effectively useless, we are harvesting these alloys from recovered artifacts when possible. The aliens must have the means to shape these materials, so further study of these technologies may allow us to do the same. We need a new project. Great. We're really we're, we're we're getting through these pretty quick like and I love it uh, stun weapons first stun weapons first But we're gonna put this down to five and that up to ten All right guys, we're gonna leave this right here for the day. Thank you for watching I do hope you have enjoyed the series and I will see you all next time